Hi everyone, my name is Kate Park. I'm here with Mally Munster and Annie Hu, and we're very excited to share with you LaughBot, which is a model and interface to detect a humor in spoken language with both audio and language cues. So a little bit about us. Uh, all three of us are currently studying computer science at Stanford University in the United States, and there we're pursuing both our bachelor and master's degrees. Um, but when we met last spring, we saw that voice agents like Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant, they were rising in popularity and they continue to do so today. However, they face many challenges and the question we wanted to ask is if we can make them better. Can we humanize them by equipping them with a humor detection system? Thus, to sum our problem, we wanted to create a model that can detect humor in spoken language using neural networks with both the audio and the transcript features. So before I dive into more details, we want to demo a little bit about what our final model, LaughBot, is. You're cute. <laughs> Here's another example of saying something flirty and then giggling, which should definitely induce laughter. You're so fun to talk to, ha ha ha. Here's an example of something that should not be laughed at. I'm really sad. I went to see a therapist yesterday. There was so much tragedy. I have so many insecurities. I don't know what to do. As you can see, LaughBot did not laugh, which is appropriate. Awesome. So those were a few examples of speaking into LaughBot and then seeing uh, the bot actually respond to you with laughter. And we want to give you some details in the process of building this model. So of course, like any good researcher, we started by looking at background research. And past research have tackled this problem of humor detection with inverse reinforcement learning, multi-class classification, and of course, neural networks. But the most relevant paper I want to introduce to you today is Bertero et al, written in 2016. And in this paper, the researchers looked at Big Bang Theory, which is an American sitcom, and its dialogues. And with that, they compared several models, including a CNN and RNN. But even though that the CNN performed better, um, even Bertero cited that that RNN was the most appropriate in theory for this conversational spoken task. Therefore, our goal was to improve upon his RNN, which achieved an F1 score of 52.9. And so how we did this, we first, uh, of course, found our data set. But instead of that sitcom data that Bertero analyzed, we wanted to um, look at a data set that was more relevant to this task of detecting humor in everyday speech, which is why we looked at the switchboard corpus. In the switchboard corpus, there are 3,000 unscripted phone conversations, each with two individuals. They include audio files, transcripts, as well as word time level intervals, and that allowed us to actually train our model. But like other researchers, we found that the percentage of funny lines is very small. It's less than 2%. And so we reweighted that data set to contain a higher percentage of punchlines so that our model wouldn't be too, uh, too biased towards unfunny and be too conservative. So now, um, just to give a bit more clarity on how we determine what is funny and not funny and thus our labels, we look at the transcript for laughter tokens, which are denoted by some form of brackets as well as the word laughter. Of course, this is English language. And then we take the line before that as the funny line. So in this case, what speaker A said in the first example is the punchline and induce speaker B to laugh. However, if somebody laughs at themselves, or um, at, for example, in this case, speaker B, then we do not count that as funny. And so now I'll hand it over to Annie to talk about the models. Great, so we implemented a few versions of models uh, before we ended up with our final model that we used. The first one we wanted to see how much information we could get just from the transcripts themselves. So we implemented a logistic regression classifier over just text features of each sentence. And those features included n-grams. Uh, we grabbed all that had that appeared at least 10 times in our training set. We grabbed part of speech tagging on each line, the sentiment of each line, the sentence length, and the average word length both of which previous research showed to be really indicative of humor, at least in sitcoms. And then we wanted to see how much information we could get just from our audio. So we implemented a recurrent 
recurrent neural network over just the audio features. And we went with the recurrent neural network both because previous research showed that it would be a useful model and because it tends to be best at capturing longer sentences and the structure of those sentences. And so the acoustic features we used were mainly MFCC 12 vectors, and that just means 12 coefficients that when taken together represent the section of audio that you're currently at. And so we grab those for every 10 milliseconds from our audio samples. We also grab the energy of the speaker because we felt that would be useful for determining whether what they said was funny or not. And this all we all, we all use the Open Smile toolkit, and since in the switchboard data set, uh, the audio files and the transcript are stored separately. We just did a little bit of corresponding so that the words and the audio snippets would actually match. And then our final model, we wanted to combine both the language and the audio features in a useful way. And I'll explain a little bit what we ended up doing there. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a little bit... Um, yeah, this <laughs> part of the diagram looks confusing, but the main thing I want to highlight is that this first section is running our acoustic features through our RNN. Then what happens is that model will encode a representation of everything that it learned from the data that we fed it, and we end up with this hidden vector um, that's just like this giant vector of numbers, um, and we concatenate that onto all the language features we extract, and then with that final concatenated vector, we feed all of that into a logistic regression classifier. And we decided it to keep using the logistic regression instead of going into a more complex model, um, just to make sure we weren't overfitting as much as possible. Cool, and this just is a textual representation of what that model is saying. And the results we got were really encouraging. So our final model is shown here we ended up hitting an F1 score of 63.2, which surpassed Fortero's RNN. And this is especially impressive because they were operating on sitcom data sets, and we expected conversational humor to be harder to detect because it's not scripted and it's also less structured. There's not kind of a formula to where the jokes will happen. And I'll pass it over to Natalie to talk about what we did with that. Wonderful. So now that we have a model, let's make it laugh. So we decided to use the model that we had and put it into what we call LaughBot, which is a conversational agent that will respond to um, a user's audio input with a laugh or not, whether it's funny or not. So what happens is the user will speak into the LaughBot and we grab and record the audio file and send it through the Google Speech API to get the transcription of the file. And then we take both the audio and the text and put it into our model and get out the classification of whether or not it was funny. And then if it was funny, we have some pre-recorded laugh tracks that we made during some late hours of development um, that <laughs> then will laugh at the user if, they think, if the model thinks it's funny. So we tested LaughBot with several, a variety of different inputs. And the things that we observed were that short inputs, such as, you're cute, were often funny. And this corresponds as well to some of the past research that we saw. A lot of other researchers found that short inputs generally tended to be funny. Then positive sentiment also generally tended to be funny. And in this case, I love you so much, it's not necessarily intended to be funny, but because it was positive, Blackbot did classify it as funny. And then, as expected, statements and questions were not funny. And then we tricked it a little bit and tried saying not funny lines in a funny way, and this had mixed results because we had conflicting textual and audio features, and so sometimes it would be funny and sometimes not. So some of the future work that we're hoping to do on LaughBot is incorporating word embeddings or glow vectors, and this would serve to reduce the dimensionality of the textual features while adding detail to our language model. We would like to explore CNNs, as we mentioned before, that other, um, like Bertero and other researchers have explored to see whether that would improve the model. We would like to make it continuous in real time, so if you noticed in our, um, in our demo, it would take 
a line at a time and then respond to the line, but we would like to make it more of a conversation where you don't have to indicate the end of your sentence. And we would also consider having a spectrum of humor instead of binary, funny or not, and also maybe different types of humor, such as sarcasm, uh, which tends to be the hardest to classify as well. So we're really excited about uh, continuing research on our LaughBot, and we hope that it contributes to the field of ambient intelligence and to communication in the future. We thank you for listening, and at this point, we are open to questions.